Should you buy a metal or a nylon mesh pop filter? Well, in this video, you'll hear the difference for yourself, and I'll let you in on some tips to keep in mind when you're shopping for a pop filter. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kyle, and I've created Audio University to help you learn the fundamental concepts of audio and how to apply them. If that sounds interesting, subscribe below. The goal of any pop filter is to protect your microphone and your audio signal from gusts of air caused by plosive sounds, such as B and P. The technique used by mesh and metal pop filters is different, though, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to use this lighter. Obviously, if I blow the lighter without a pop filter, the flame will go out. A mesh pop filter aims to stop or resist the airflow. So if I hold the lighter here, some air gets through, but it's not enough to blow out the flame. A metal pop filter, on the other hand, doesn't stop the air, it just redirects it in a new direction. So if I hold the flame in the center, nothing happens. But if I move the flame down, the flame goes out. The way this works is that the air enters and it's redirected downward away from the microphone. Now I'll demonstrate how effective each one is in accomplishing the goal of protecting the microphone from plosive sounds. We'll use the classic Peter Piper tongue twister. No pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Mesh pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And a metal pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Both pop filters did a great job in accomplishing their primary goal to protect the audio signal from plosive sounds. However, the main difference that I see between inexpensive and expensive pop filters isn't in the audio quality, but in more practical things. For example, this pop filter by Stedman stays exactly where you place it. And honestly, this inexpensive mesh pop filter stays pretty well too. I have dealt with pop filters in the past though, that you try to set them in a specific way and they keep bending back to their original form. The more expensive the pop filter, the nicer the gooseneck will be that comes with it. This is something important to keep in mind when you're shopping. Another difference is the quality of the clamp between pop filters. Make sure you get a pop filter that has a nice clamp that will stay secure. This one was very cheap, and as you tighten it down, it actually starts to go on one side or the other of the stand instead of directly in the center. You almost have to hold your thumb there to get it to work properly. Metal pop filters are much easier to clean. You just rinse them off in water, and they'll last a lot longer because of that. It's much harder to clean a nylon pop filter. Although I believe that a nice pop filter is a worthy investment, you can get the job done with an inexpensive nylon version that I found on Amazon, and I've put a link to that in the description. This Stedman ProScreen XL does a great job. It'll last me a long time. I've put that in the description as well, and it really doesn't cost that much more. I hope you've gotten value out of this video, and if you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to Audio University, and check out the website at audiouniversityonline.com. Thanks for watching.